Okay, run the die roll again, so we're playing first. We're playing against Gwilian. This is the person we are passing two down um, for. So down on our left, if you were, if you will. Um, so that's nice. We definitely have a keep here. Um, we have a nice two drop follow up combat trick, and then we'll be able to play the war once we draw our next planes. Leading with the planes. Our opponent is mulliganing to six. Maybe this is the person who's in red and got that exquisite firecraft. Uh, exquisite firecraft. Is that what's called? Yeah, there's some red. If our opponent, um, who's next to us, didn't grab it, I'm gonna go ahead and play the Topin Free Blade. No, I'm gonna play the Screeching Scob because I don't want to get fiery impulsed. Could be wrong. Maybe I'm being too conservative. Maybe just run it out and just say like, "Hey, here it is." There goes our planes and island. Don't know how I feel about that. I do need at least one more land. To get things going. But I just anticipate like my two drop like trading off. Yeah. So we'll offer the trade Z's here. Opponent does not block. Interesting. That's fine. And we're just gonna start deploying flyers. Follow up with some powerful spells a little bit later. Turn to Frog has helped get things through. Turn to Frog to like get rid of the spiders that might be keeping our flyers back. So red green next to us. That makes sense. Pawn's like, oh, I guess we're in a racing position. Ooh, a throwing knife. I like that card. It doesn't do a whole lot against the War Oracle, which is what I care about right now, because that's what I'm going to curve into. Nice draws on the mana, by the way. Ditched two on the ground and then kept drawing. Yeah, the Screeching Scob. Very lucky for me. That's why I chose to play over the Topin Freeblade. Um, not that we would have been screwed or anything, so I would still have been drawing them, and maybe I would have gone the Scob down, but I might have started flooding after this turn. So opponent doesn't have any great targets for the throwing knife. Could just try to do the race. My opponent's like, well, I'm not really blocking. I don't know. Could just equip or ideally has a four drop follow-up of his or her own. So this Warcle doesn't do too much. I like having the turn to frog in order to keep bashing through. Doesn't get the War Oracle through, but it allows some good stuff. I won't even mind another land. Just to be able to play like a turn to frog or token free blade with the scrap scrapskin drake. Hello, four four. You're probably turned to frog. I'm again to guess. So yeah, let's attack with everyone. Opponents tapped out. Anything blocks the war call. Turn to frog. I don't mind the screeching scob. If my opponent wants to do like Zendikar to the screeching scob, I don't mind a turn to frog and a screeching scob trading for the Zendikar. Uh, what's it called? Come on. Come on, lag. Zendikar Incarnate. That's what it's called. Got it. Oops. I just want one of each, please. Make you go down. I'll gain some life, and I'll play a token free blade. A little bit of lag here. I'm going to have to restart Moto, it seems, as soon as this uh, game is finished up. Six stone. Is this a deck where I'd want to sideboard into a different aggression? I don't think so. Oh one, one but it's going to have trouble with flyers. So that matches up pretty nicely. 3-1. Three, the 3-3-3-1. Three, 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 do I just trade? I think I do. No, I don't. I'll just keep attacking the air. I'm already ahead enough. I'm going to put another flyer in the air. I don't feel like there's much of a reason to. Maybe I should have done it with the Topin Freeblade, because then it's like a 2-2. Two, two. Um, I'm going to keep this Planes in hand. Because I'm just going to ditch the Artificer's Epiphany, and remember I top out at 4 and I have my land. But I do want to play the Scrapskin Drake before the Epiphany. I just want to keep getting my flyers on. I like opponents on the back foot here.
So my opponent just killing the token free blade here? Seems about right. Alright, they traded one for one. I'm not blocking. No way in heck. Because uh, any combat trick, I don't need to trade. I, I guess a Titanic Growth or Titanic Strength would be the ones. Not any. My other masses wouldn't do it, but... Not worth it. Alright, opponent gets a little flyer online. I guess I will just go ahead and um, attack with the War Oracle now. I'll still gain some life. If my opponent wants to double block it... Yeah, sure. I think first though I'll go with the Artificer's Epiphany? No. I want to represent some combat tricks. And if the Thopter kills the War Oracle and my opponent takes four off of it and I've gained a bunch of life, um, my flyers are still in pretty good shape. Opponent's not taking that route. I don't really see the point of just chumping. I mean, maybe there is that combat trick. Yeah, combat trick's coming down. That's fine. We're getting cards out of my opponent's hand. We're ahead. Flyers stay alive. All good. Ooh, using the Titan Strength. That's interesting. Because it's still a trade. Odd choice. I guess because it, it's a Titan Strength, the, the, something would trade it anyway. My opponent is more worried about the flyers than anything else. I will play another land. And end of turn, I'll be doing the Artificer's Epiphany, I'm sure. Yep. Opponent's not planning on blocking. Must have a big old follow-up. Could stabilize here. It'd be hard for my opponent to be attacking. Can't stabilize with so little cards, though. Basswood Gorger does do a lot of damage, but it's not a flyer. Oh, wow. Wowzers. Yeah, let's get those off the top of my library. Gosh, more? Really? So I might as well F6, since I'm not going to show my opponent all these... Uh, Guys, my opponent probably thinks I have some tricks and stuff since I did an Artificer's Epiphany discarded land and now I have three cards in hand. I don't need that much land to be played in this deck. My deck continues to be fine without. Doesn't have it been screwed yet. Interesting, my opponent's attacking for five. Because it's still the War Oracle. Maybe there's like a burn spell to kill it. Orchard Spirit. Hmm. Oh my gosh. Um. Do I offer the two for one here? I don't think so. Yeah, I'm gonna gain some life. The thing is, my opponent shouldn't block. Maybe a chump, yeah, but, but I've represented that I have, like, combat tricks. There's, like, no way my opponent should have blocked there. Or double blocked, I should say. It was fine to chump, because that's what my opponent wants to do. Um, opponent's now uh, hanging back with the Vastwood Gorger appropriately because it's like, oh wait, if I do that, I can't attack with the War Oracle or ooh, Hitchcloud Recluse that's where that Turn to Frog would be nice we'll go ahead and Celestial Flare it though remember, I have a combat trick in hand but actually it's a Celestial Flare Hitchclaw Recluse is good against me and good for my opponent to slow the game down. I actually like that card a lot more than most people in this format. I'm not saying it's a high pick. I'm just saying if you're playing green, it's really helpful. And it's definitely main deckable. Okay, the big beats are coming down. Opponent still doesn't have flyers, though. Opponent can try to do a huge swing here, but I still always get to gain three life. I'm going to put on a two-turn clock. Charging Griffin. It's a good card. All right. We'll just attack in the air. Have my guy back for blocks and gain a little bit of life. 
it is a little dangerous that if my opponent has another like seismic, um, what you call it, seismic elemental that I lose because it's 11 damage exactly. However, I don't anticipate that being the case. There's already a six drop. This is an uncommon at five. Pretty rare. Um, both the flyers are lethal. Oracle can chump, gain some life so I don't die, which is what it's exactly going to do. And then having two lethal flyers is nice because my opponent would have to like deal with both of them. So there you go. Gosh, flooding out. I am attacking with both because I'm dead. Because I don't want my opponent to have a removal spell and then not die. Um, I think if I don't attack, um, then my opponent is much more likely to be able to win percentage-wise. Okay, I'm gonna pause for a second and restart Moto because I'm lagging so hard. Alright, restarted, we're back. Uh, I don't know how much time I have for, uh, sideboarding. Do I want to sideboard anything? I like my, I like that, um... My flyers are so good against my opponent, but I don't know if I have any ways to really make them better. Maybe just try to like be quicker, which is the game plan against that deck. I'm still not too sure about the 17 land build, but I'm going to keep it. Hello, person here. <laughs> we'll wait again. Oh, here we are. Opponent is playing first and did not mulligan this game. We have an okay hand. Uh, it's actually very good. One drop with removal spell, any land. We can start playing our three drops. Uh... We just hope it to be a, a planes, basically. So definitely gonna keep. We have our mana sink if we do draw too many spells. And we drew the exact land we wanted. Which probably means our next hopeful play is we or draw it. We draw two drops, we have a bunch of them. So then we can go into Jesse and Thief and then like disperse something and uh, get some damage through. Oh my gosh, this is too good to be true. Our luck in these last two games has been quite nice. We just had a, an a amazing draw, really. Free Bay could get burned out, like lifetime, but we haven't seen the fire impulses yet, and I'm not going to not play a two drop when I have one. It's like it's that good. We've been able to like follow with the Jesse and Thief and then disperse something. Ow! So nice. Oh, so very nice. Um, do I attack into this? I don't think so. I want a bunch of my creatures alive. For the Amprin Tactician. If I didn't have the Amprin Tactician, then maybe I would just like bluff the token free blade. My opponent would make the block, that's fine, but I, I want these guys down. And I'm guaranteed to be able to play the Tactician next turn if it seems um, profitable, if my opponent stumbles on a 4 drop or something. Otherwise, we'll just disperse it, tack in, get our card off of Jesse and Thief. Ideally, if our luck just continues to be insane, our opponent doesn't have a strong 4-drop. And, uh, or, uh, no, that's a 4-drop that matters. Pretty sure. Just gonna go for the Disperse. Screechings. Yeah, we need to... S oh, I only have one blue, though. Mm, bummer. I think we Disperse and attack with, uh, with the Free Blade and the Jesse and Thief. I'll get a draw a card and maybe trade. Um, this 2-3 is going to be an issue, but uh, we're going to have, like, at least some pressure coming down. And if I want to, the Crow and Jailer is going to start tapping tapping down the dude. Is that right? I just love getting this uh, card off the Jesse and Thief. The thing is, Disperse is a card being used, but it sets my opponent back, so that's the idea. Um, I'm just considering, do I want to do the Tactician? No, because then my opponent just eats the Jesse and Thief. Okay, I'm on board. Attacking with both, because I'm representing Celestial Flare and some combat tricks. Plus, I anticipate the Orchid Spirit being blocking the Tobin Free Blade anyway, so I'm pretty sure this is a free point of damage. And if my opponent does block it and calls my bluff, I now have the 3-3 token free blade, so I'm in a good spot. Ooh, Ingrid Aether, that's also going to be good as our next follow-up. Keep the tempo rolling. 
opponent might just play the next, uh, the same, uh, what you call it? Um, oh my gosh, what's it called? Uh, Farika's Disciple. We'll put her back on top of the library, attack some more. Um, we are getting to six drop territory where that Vastwood Gorger becomes relevant. Okay, I just do a crow and maybe I do just do the jailer. Tap down, just keep drawing a bunch of cards. Like if I draw a land here, maybe do that and follow up the screeching scob. I actually like that a lot. Oh wait. Yeah, we're just gonna start controlling out a little bit. Especially because I get to develop my board while I do this. Ooh, that's nice too. Do you want to get the flyers down at some point? I only have one blue source right now, so I can't like get straight all that happening. Let's see what my opponent's play is. I love the idea of tapping down something, and then whatever else I want to kill, use the celestial flare. Yeah. What do I want to kill though? That's good too. So I think we just put the anchor to the ether. We use the anchor to the ether to ditch. What's more worrisome to me? The thing is, I actually do want to draw my card. So if I tap, if I use the mana to tap down one, yeah, we're gonna do that because the next turn I'm also gonna be able to have anchor plus um, the jailer as well. I can do that now, actually. Huh. No, but the Celestial Fairs now is the time to do it. Mm, I'm going to go with getting rid of the Death Toucher, because maybe this Tactician ends up like helping bash through some stuff later. But we're pretty much just going to go the... Uh, um, get rid of the, the Death Touch route. It doesn't it does mean I'm gonna draw my card this turn, but I get two points of damage through. So even though I want to be an aggressive build, I'm you know just. Just playing the sturdy card advantage game. Didn't get any card advantage that game, but I think we're setting ourselves up for some good stuff here. Might need to take this turn off to make sure I get the uh, the scraps and drake down. Because really, the key here is like I need a, a threat to keep this this tempo going better. And yet, my opponent only plays an Elvish Visionary. And have, we haven't seen removal spells from my opponent, which is really what's allowed me to stay this alive. Opponent can bash for seven here. Ooh, all right, big boys are down. A little worrisome. A little worrisome. Opponent attack for seven. Yes, my opponent does attack for seven. Are you listening? Whoa. Stratus walk on Jesse and Thief is happening. Drawing cards, doing damage. Um, that allows me also to either play Anchor to the Aether or Scrapskin Drake and keep these other guys back for blocks. Or I could just keep the Crow and Jailer up. One, two, three. This is happening no matter what. I just want to draw a bunch of cards right now. Um, I like this. This is going to be the most options to make the best decisions. Well, my opponent's tapped out. Another land is okay because I actually have a lot that I want to do. I'm not attacking in with my other guys no matter what, I think. Uh, one, two, three, four. Pretty sure we're just going to anchor this turn, get rid of these big boys. I don't want the seismic elemental necessarily. Probably just gonna chump away with the screeching scob. 
and try to uh, get some tempo advantage. I should have played Anchor first. Dang, it's a point of damage missing and the Scry. That was silly. Um, yeah, I could have gotten rid of that planes. Definitely want to be playing my lands, though. Hold on. I can play the Scrapskin Drake right now to have more pressure in the air. And then I have a Chumper, and I take 5 damage, and I'm okay with that. I actually do think I want to do that right now. I think it's important to get the... Uh, the flyers going. If I'd played Re Anchor of the Aether and the Elemental, or the Zendikar's Royal, Zendikar's, what's it called? Incarnate. I don't even remember these card names. The Incarnate was gone. My opponent would be at 10. I'd have a better card in hand. comes the chumps. So I put going for a win. Puts me at five. It doesn't mean a hard spot, but I have mana to do Anchor and a Crow and Jailer. Gear per Gear Crafter. Seems like my opponent is looking to finish off with these big boys, which is the best route victory for my opponent for sure. Kythian Tactics gets really nice. Um, I have two in the graveyard, so if I play Kythian Tactics, guys get big and have Vigilance. So I get to keep my Crow and Jailer. One, two, three, one, two, three, plus two. But I can't do Anchor to the Aether as well. And two of my guys can't block. However, is it enough to push damage? No. So we're going to save Kythian's tactics for now. We're going to go ahead and anchor the Thopter. Is that correct? That can't be correct. If I anchor the Thopter, I get in for four. My opponent is down to seven. I have the Acroan Jailer to uh, tap one dude down, but then I uh, am dead to four, five, six, seven, another crack back. So I can't do that. So the anchor to the aether has to be to one of the big boys, like the seven, four. I still get attacking with my flyers. Doctor probably just chumps the Jessian thief, which is okay, though not awesome, not where I want to be. My opponent's down to nine. I have a crone jelly there, and I take three on the crack back, which is okay, and I'm still starting to put myself in a decent position. Is there any reason to play the Amber Tactician? It is a blocker, but it doesn't really do much. Yeah. We're bouncing Zendigar. We get our prowess trigger. And our scry. Which is like drawing a card. And then we'll attack with our flyers. If I could win with the tactics, I would have done that, but I can't. One pump spell, though, and I lose. The nice thing is, well, I know my opponent's drawing a creature, but the um, a Crowan Jailer is going to tap down the Seismic Dude. My opponent can bash in for three, and then I might be able to win in the air after that. But if my opponent has a, a pump spell, then I'm dead, because uh, taking three life... Plus, you know, any of the pump spells in the format kills me. So it had to be a combat trick that was already in hand. Oh no! Well, I guess now I'm just chumping. <laughs> that was horrible. I clicked through the beginning combat. Uh, my bad. I think I just threw this game away. Well, shit, son. Well, shit. Put falls with the Zendikar. Can I get nine damage through this turn? <sighs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. I can oh, except there's a big old Avarice Dragon. Hmm. Do I have a removal spell? Fun's discarding the Zendikar, dude. 
Big ol' 4-4. Four, four. Ah, oh, I threw this game away. If I had my, um, a Crone Jailer out, eh, maybe I'd still be dead. I don't know. But I, I might still be able to get this game going. If I do an attack... If I do Kythian Tactics... One, two, three, four... Can I gain life in any way? Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. I'm one land away from playing all my spells. If I play the Tactics... These guys can't block, though, so that's why. Celestial Flare, I can take out something next turn, but that's not going to help. If I play the Amprin Tactician... Okay, so the only hope I have right now... I can't do lethal with any one of my creatures. My opponent's going to block, no matter what. Um, so I have to play the Tactician as a blocker. And then um, I'm going to have to use the Celestial Flare um, to kill the Avarice Dragon. Or I could just attack with the Jessian. It would become a... And if my opponent blocks, if my opponent blocks, then I'll use the Celestial Flare. But I don't get to draw a card. So what I do is... This is so rough. I'm definitely playing this guy. So do I attack for three? It could be... But I do chump, chump. I think I can survive if I don't attack right now. When my opponent attacks, before I declare blocks, I do a celestial flare. My opponent gets one of the stupid dorks gone. And I might be able to survive. I don't think I will, but it's a maybe. It's my only chance to possibly win. Oh my gosh, I had the jailer down. That's such a big mistake. Removal spell? Ah, uh, I guess that's okay. I'm just not gonna be able to win next turn, so. Tactics aren't gonna be enough. Let's see what my opponent does. Maybe with my long tank, it'll make my opponent do a long tank. It's like, what can my opponent have here? Ooh, my opponent did do two spells, not two lands. Ooh, and a wild instincts. Okay. I'm pretty sure I'm dead now. My opponent attacks with all. I do. The visionary's gone, and yeah, we're conceding. That's it. All right. I threw that game away. I think I should have won that with the Crow and Jailer. So I'm giving my opponent the opportunity to win. I'm going to keep the aggressive build. My opponent just seems to be playing the big boys. And I think I lose the big boy fight. Love the flyers against my opponent. Either my opponent has a big old dragon. We got ways to handle that. Yeah, I'm keeping it. Especially on the play. Yeah, I want to play first. Oof. Horrible hand. We're going to have to throw that away, but our hand, our deck should be able to mulligan pretty decently. This isn't great, but two drop, three drop. I'm not going to go down to five on the play, so there you have it. The opponent did keep seven, which is bummers. All the bummers. Two drop, three drop, tactician. Not exactly what I'm hoping for from this deck. Need a little bit more power, but maybe draw one of our nice four drops. What's your two? A timber pack wolf. In that case, with a tactician, um, I will not attack and trade off. Because we'll be able to play that next turn and bash through, I presume. 
Let's see if Home Slice wants to attack. Does my opponent have red mana? Yes, my opponent does have red mana. I'm F6. I'm not blocking. My opponent is not blocking, nor should my opponent be blocking. I will attack with all. There, there could be a combat trick here, but I mean, it's going to get eaten anyway, and I don't mind the two drop taking the combat trick. It forces my opponent to use it, so that's fine. Combat trick. Titan Strength, Titanic Growth, Titanic Growth. Okay. Two for two. Okay, I think Tactics currently just going to sit in my hand for a very long time. Wild Instincts appropriately taking out the Flyer. Opponent doesn't have attacks, though. I'll get a attack back for three at least. I'll use the entire turn. Opponent should it. Oh, my opponent. Do I want to? No, I don't want two for two. <laughs> opponent does have attacks, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna offer that two for two. That seems silly to me. Play my free blade and F6 while my opponent's tapped out. I don't like the position I'm in, considering my opponent has a bunch of cards, and my opponent starts overpowering me once, um, you know, five or six mana starts coming down. And these are not the cards with the evasion that are going to help, but maybe the tactics I'll, I'll end up using just to get through. I could do that now. Hmm. Interesting decision. If I just sit around for a while, not a lot's going to happen, so I'm going to go with the tactics. My uh, Amprin Tactician, I mean, the, either one of them trade for the Seismic Elemental, which is fine, and I get damage in. So my opponent can choose how he or she wants to do that. Too bad I don't have Vigilance, but whatever. Can't imagine my opponent taking nine here, but it could happen. Trade goes off. What's a card that can actually get me to win this game? Stratus Walk, if I have enough time and my opponent doesn't have something big, I can a three turn clock plus draw a card might be nice. A flyer, all my flyers are two power basically, so that's a lot of turns with my opponent's a lot of cards with plenty of mana to where that might be not enough. Um, one of my tempo, like Anchor to the Aethers or Disperses, might be able to like bounce whatever my opponent plays and I can attack for three and my opponent would either have to chump or take some damage. But then I'm kind of back to square one. War Oracle's nice, but a little slow. I think Stratus Walk is the best draw for me right now. Fire Fiend Elemental. Ooh, opponent's putting the pressure on. This could trade off, too. Will my opponent go for the attack? Yeah, my opponent does not go for... I mean, the Fire Fiend attacked. Um, good call on the Wolf attack, of course. Disperse is nice. Kind of what I was looking for. Not awesome, but it puts me in a better position to be winning. If I can run a couple of good draws out, then I'll, I won't be in super dire straits. Would have preferred Anchor, so I knew my opponent was drawing that card, and so that I could, um, what you call it, uh, Scry. Ooh, I love that card. Um, it's really good against me right now. Just infinite blockers. Chumpers. It might take my opponent's entire turn. Maybe my opponent doesn't want to use it yet. There's at least that hasty boy ready to go. But I think it's going to be really key. Make sure I don't get those last six points of damage through. I 
again. Do I have anything that can get me out of this precarious situation? All right, so opponent's going for the Llanowar Empath. Deciding on scries. Please don't have a creature. Please reveal a land after you bottomed a bunch. Nope, one's on top. Opponent got the gear crafter. So they put have a land to play it? No. So at least there's that. Oof, that's bad. I'm still gonna attack in. Opponent can have a combat trick, but I can only win this game, I think, if I can try to put some damage through to my opponent. That clears the way a little bit. Opponent is a gear crafter to just get defense up for days. One, two, three, one, two, three. If my opponent drew a land too, there's also the haster, but I guess that's not the case. I wonder what else is in my opponent's hand. Seven drop of some kind? Orchard spirit? Okay. Wow. That is a bit of a bummer. At this point, I can't attack. I need to keep up blocks, so... With every uh, land draw, my percentages are going way down for winning. I don't even know if anything gets me out of this now. My opponent can attack with evasion for three a turn, get some more flyers out. I can never really attack back unless I draw action, action. That's, again, I'm like so far behind. Opponent has the haster, yep. Might even just bash through, turn off for the trade. Are you attacking with everything? No. Definitely should attack with the evasive dudes as well. I will do the trade. I think I will go for eating a creature though. I think that I will do. Ooh, and we're done. Well, I lost that match due to my own um, fault for having, on that second game, uh, clicked through beginning combat. So I can't blame anyone besides me. We'll see you in game, uh, round three.